1 Samuel chapter 27, verse 1. And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines, and Saul shall despair of me to seek me any more in any coast of Israel. So shall I escape out of his hand. We see that David is, he was with the Lord last week, but we now we see he's getting away from the Lord again. Because he's afraid Saul's going to kill him. When he's already been told by two prophets, you're going to be a king. But David is running from Saul again. Thinking, no, if I go over there, over here, there's no way he's going to follow me. Now if I was to ask you what was David's biggest sin from what you know of David, I'm sure some of you would say murder. Because he killed the uh, the husband of Bathsheba. And then some of y'all would say, well, it was probably adultery. Well, there were both sins, but of course we know that sin is just sin. You know, there's no greater sin or lesser sin in the Bible. But David's sin right here, right now, is not believing God. There's no bigger sin or lesser sin. But I'm about to say this. I think when you don't believe the Word of God, when you don't believe what He says, I don't think there's no greater sin than that when you don't believe your father. Now, of course, I'm not talking about the sin that can send you to hell for rejecting them, but that's for lost people. I'm talking about Christians. Christians who don't believe what the Father says. I wouldn't want to be there. I want to believe everything. In fact, when I gave my life to the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm going to believe everything in here. Everything. Before I even read that this was the infallible Word of God, I had already told myself I was going to believe everything in here. And I do. Because if I don't, why am I living for them? Why would I live for someone that I don't believe they're right in everything? Right? So, well, you got to make up your mind, okay, I'm going to believe everything in the Bible. Even if it goes against my religion, I'm going to believe the Bible. Even if it goes against things I've been taught by other Gospels, which there's a lot of other Gospels out there, and a lot of more cult Gospels, they're not good news, because the word Gospel means good news. This is the good news, right here. Those other Gospels are not good news. All they do, all they want to do is deceive you and take you into their own thinking, their own beliefs. This is the Gospel of the Bible. Now he says in verse 1, he says, And David said in his heart, after all these times, the Lord has protected him. When Saul has tried to kill him more than once, the Lord has protected him. And now, David is going to trust in his own heart. That's what he's doing right here. And David said, in his heart, in his heart. Not in his spirit, not from the Lord, but in his heart. So he's going to follow his heart now. That's what he's doing. Is he standing on the Word of God? That, Like I said, two prophets told him. Samuel and uh, Gad, the prophets, they told him he was going to be king. Is he standing on that? Is he standing on the word of God where he says, I'm, God said you're going to be king? No, he's trusting in his own heart and by trusting in his own heart, he's running from Saul. He's going totally opposite from what the Lord said to do. I've told you many times in the scriptures about the heart. In Genesis 6-5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This is what God says. In all the earth, God found only Noah and his family that was right, that believed God. Out of all the earth, only Noah and his family. And that's the way it is now. That's the way it is now. God showed him back then what he was going to do. He had a flood, right? Everybody was killed except for the righteous people. Well, that's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. God's going to come for his people, and those who are here, left behind, is going to face death, eternal, spiritual death. It says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14 enter ye into the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be in which 
go therein at. Because straight is the gate, and narrows the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So just like back then, just like in Noah's time, only a, only one family found it. And it's the same thing today. You have a lot of religious people, a lot of religious people. And I'm not, I don't know what kind of percent it is, but a lot of those are not making it to heaven either, as I showed you last week. You know, there's going to be a lot of them, and just they're going to say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this and do that in your name? And God's going to say, hey, depart from me. I never knew you. So God knows the heart, why you did it. Were you a preacher because you just, you, you wanted the money? And you wanted the glory and you wanted to be popular? Is that why you did it? Or did it, or did you do it from your heart? Because that's what you wanted to do and the Lord gave you the gift of, of preaching or teaching. So there's going to be a lot of people going to hell. A lot of people. Jeremiah 17.9 The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? This is the word of God. In English it's saying, our heart is sick. We have a sick heart. That's, that's what it's saying. I know you might think, well, my heart's not that bad. Yes, it is. It says, who can know it? You can't even know your own heart. You don't know how you're going to react to whatever until, the time, until something happens. Do you hear me? God knows our heart. He's the only one that knows our heart. He knows our heart better than we do. This is why we should do what it says in Proverbs 4.23. It says, Guard your heart above all else, for it is determined the course of your life. Our heart determines how we're going to be in our life. Our heart does. It all starts right here, from your heart. That's where it starts. When you give your heart to the Lord, and that's what, when you get born again, that's what we're doing. We're giving not your mind, your heart. When you give your heart to the Lord, this is what happens. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You become a new creature. That wicked heart, oh, it's still in there, but the Spirit takes it over. Now, you can let it out, but you allow the Spirit to take over, and that's what walking in the Spirit is. You're living in the Spirit. And you're not living in the flesh. Living in the flesh is, is part of your old heart. But the Lord says, you're a new creature now. You're a changed person. That heart that you had, now you have meekness and mercy. Alright? You got love. So, David is going by his fleshly heart instead of the Lord. And there's a big difference between the heart and God's words. You know, your heart might be telling you this, but if you read the Word of God, you might find something totally different. So there's a big difference between the heart, your heart, and the Word of God. We need to look to Jesus. That's why He's given us His, his Bible, His words. He's given us, given us instructions on how to live life. Don't live it with that wicked heart. Because we're going to see what, David, what happened to David because he, lived by his, he went by his heart instead of the Word of God. David seems to have forgotten everything he's known. He was a man of God. He seems to have forgotten everything he knew. God was with him against the giant. He was with God was with him with a, a lot of took protected him in a lot of areas. David seems to have forgotten that. And what do I always say? Christians have a short memory. They forget what God did over here. And they're just looking over here. We need to get away from that. Back in chapter 22, verse 5, the prophet Gad told David to go to the land of Judah. Prophets didn't tell people what to do unless they heard from God. So this was really God telling David, go to Judah. Because that is where God was going to protect them. David didn't listen. David didn't go. David goes back to the land of the Philistines, where Goliath is from. And Gath is still king. Remember, he's been there before. That's when he acted like a crazy man. Well, he's going back over there again. He's going back to the enemies of God to get help. He's done it before. Now he's doing it again. 
How many of us have gone to get help from the enemy of God? We've done it ourselves. Matthew 12.30 This is the enemy, okay? Matthew 12.30 He that is not with me is against me. This is Jesus' thought. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. If you're against them, if you're against Jesus, you're an enemy. John 15.23 Jesus spoke these words. He that hateth me hateth my father also. So these anybody who is not born again Christian, and they're not born again because they don't want to believe or they just don't want to accept the Lord. That's an enemy. And this is what David is doing. He's going to the enemy for help. And like I said, if you think about it, we've done the same thing. Some sometime in our life, in a different kind of way, but we've gone to the enemy for help. Forsake the counsel of the ungodly is what the Bible says. And just like I said before, I'm going to say it again, Dr. Phil, the women love him. They think he has great counsel. But do you ever hear Dr. Phil directing someone to the Word of God or directing someone to Jesus? Does he ever do that? No. This is an, enem an enemy of God. And not just Dr. Phil, but others that are like him. So I hope, you, I hope you can see the picture of what I'm trying to paint here. There's enemies of God that we haven't noticed to be enemies of God. When we don't believe in what, the, what God says to us, we're going to find ourselves in trouble. We will find ourselves... Where else can you go? If you're not walking with God, you're still going to be good? You're still going to be on the right path when you're not walking with the Lord? No, you can't. Because if this is the right path also that you've chosen, then we got more than one right path. But God is the only right path, and we know that. So we need, we need to listen to the Lord when He speaks to us. Because we will get in trouble when we decide to do things our way. God has put this here so we can learn from David's mistakes. This, I said, this teaching, we're going to see David, I mean, he's called a man of God. That's what he's called. A man after God's own heart. But how many mistakes have we found David to make since the beginning of his teaching? Oh, he's got great times, but then he, he gets pretty, pretty darn low. And this is a man of God. So if David is a man of God, we better, we better, we better read the word. So we don't make those mistakes. Because if David can do that and he's a, a man after God's own heart, well, we're going to find out later, later, not tonight, but we're going to find out later if we're after God's own heart. We're going to find that out later. David, the teaching on David is only going to get deeper. You're going to go, well, it's pretty deep now. No, it will get deeper. Verse 2. And David arose, and he passed over with 600 men that were with him unto Achish, the son of Malk, king of Gath. And David, and David dwelt with Achish at Gath, he and his men, every man with his household, even David with his two wives, Ahimoman, the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the Karma's light. Nabal's wife, which he's dead. He's dead now, but David has taken her as a wife. He's got two wives. Man of God. He's got two wives. Genesis 2.24 Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. David knows this. This was written back in Genesis. David knows this. It doesn't say that, that he will have wives and he and shall cleave unto his wives. Don't say wives, it says wife. And I'm going to say those for people who are listening to this teaching. If you're not sure about gay, being homosexual, Adam and Eve. It was Adam and Eve that God put together. Okay, Adam and Eve. He didn't say that Adam would cleave to his husband. He didn't say that. He said he would cleave to his wife, a woman, which was Eve. 
people out there who believe being gay is okay, it's against the word of God. That's all I'm going to say about that. This also shows us that he's not walking with the Lord. Because of this, taking on two wives, it says in Galatians 5, 9, a little leaven leaveneth, leaveneth the whole lump. In the New Testament, leaven is a symbol of sin, sinful influence. So there, if you let a little sin in, it says right here, it leaveneth the whole lump. It means it's going to destroy the whole thing. You let a little sin in, and believe me, it will grow. Oh, this is just, you know, this is just one little, no. Sin is sin, and it can destroy you. The, the, the verse is right there. What it's saying, a little sin will destroy your life. And we're going we're gonna to see more about that. Verse 4. And it was told Saul that they was fled to Gath, and he sought no more again for him. Now it looks like David's plan is working. Well, if I take off over here, Saul won't follow me. And that's what happened. He took off over there to the Philistines, and now Saul's not uh, going after him. Just like I said last week, just because it looks good doesn't mean it's from the Lord. David thinks, oh, you know, I got it made now. Saul's not after me anymore. He's not going to come over here where the enemy is. Sounds good, huh? But it's not the will of God. It was not God's will for him to go that way. Even though it looked good, it got him away from that. But it wasn't God's will. I kind of went into detail last week about that. Just because it looks good doesn't mean it's from God. Verse 5. And David said unto Achish, If I have, if I have now found grace in thy eyes... Let them give me a place in some town in the country, that I may dwell there. For why should thy servant dwell in a royal city with thee? Okay, we're going to see what happens when you're not walking with the Lord. David says to this lost king, enemy of God, remember, this king is an enemy of God. And he says, I'm your servant. What does that tell you? He's going not to God. But he's going to this lost king and saying, I'm your servant. Some of these, these statements I make, think about them. Think about it. Because it doesn't necessarily have to be a king, a person. But you could be a servant to material things. Also. We only have, we should be a servant only to the Lord. Period. Not a servant to, I gotta have things. Not a servant to you. To your work, I have to, I mean, I'm a workaholic. What you do, where your heart is, that's, that's what you're a servant to. People have to work. Yes, the Lord said men would till the ground. Men have to work. But that's not our God. We don't live to work. We work to live. So be careful. You're working seven days a week because you want to make money. Well, when you get sick, don't blame the Lord. Because he said, work six days, and he said, then, and you need a day of rest. We, he made these bodies, so he knows what these bodies can do. And when he said, we need a day of rest, he knows. So if you're out there working seven days a week because you, you like the money, like I said, don't blame the Lord if you get sick. David here is doing, is, is doing the same thing that's going to happen during the tribulation. During the tribulation... After religious people, when they see the rap, when the rapture that the Lord did come and took the born again believers away, and they were going to go, you know, they taught me that in school, but I really didn't believe it. But now that I see that it happened, now they're going to know, you know what, there is a God. So they're going to be truly born again believers. Probably not from the heart, because. During the tribulation, what's going to happen to people who say they're not going to worship the devil? They're going to be killed, right? So you can, at the beginning, you can be, oh, I'm a believer now. But then when it comes time and they say, are, are you going to worship the, the devil? You're going to have to say no and stand on your belief that God is God and probably get killed. Or you're going to give in like David and say, hey, no, no, I'm your servant. 
You hear what I'm saying? It's just so you, because you don't want to get killed? Oh no, I'll do what you tell me. I'm your servant. Be careful. This is how bad it can get when we leave the Lord. Look at the prodigal son. How many of us know about the prodigal son? Most of us, some of us. Okay, the prodigal son, he was living, it was, a, it was like a parable. He was living at home with his father, a godly man. And he wanted to go out into the world. So his father let him go. While he was out there, he found a job feeding the pigs. That's what he, he found. Going out in the world, that's what he, the job he found was feeding pigs. And he got so hungry that the food he was feeding the pigs started to look good to him. That's what it says. Started to look good to him. And he was willing to fill his belly with pig's food. He was with the father who had everything. His father had a, you know, like I said, this is a parable. His father had everything. He had a big ranch, had cattle, had everything. He wanted to leave it and go into the world. And look what happened to him while he was in the world. What happens? He comes back home. He says, why am I out here? I'm eating pig's food. When I could be living this way. Don't leave the Lord. The Lord's going to take care of us. Good. Good. I mean, he's going to take very good care of us. But you want to go out there without him? You know, some people make it. But just remember, that's only temporarily. They might have a lot. They might go out there and make a lot of money, but it's only temporary. And something else is not real happiness. Because people who have a lot of money, they're always having to look behind their back to see who's trying to take it. Now, verses six through twelve, I'm not going to read them, but it says the king gave him a town to live in for about four and a half years. About four, about no, about a year and four months he lived there, and David went to battle. For the king, for this king, he went to battle. But not against the cities that the king wanted him to go to battle. The king wanted him to go fight the, you know, Israel. But he was fighting other Philistine cities. But the king, the king didn't know that. But he kills everybody in those cities because he doesn't want it to get back to the king that he's killing the wrong people for that king. And the king is thinking, okay, he's killing all these Israelites now they're really going to hate him. So because of that, he's going to have to stay with me. There's no way he can go now. A mighty, a mighty warrior. Remember, David is a mighty warrior. And this king is going, because he's killing his own people, there's no way they're going to accept him back. So now he's going to be stuck here with me. We can see that David's way is working. His way. Remember that. His way. But now he's having to lie to the king. So now we're going to go to chapter 28. We're going to skip down to chapter 28. It says in verse 1, And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. And Achish said unto David, Know thou surely that thou shalt go out with me to battle, thou and thy men. Now we're going to see that David's lies are beginning to catch up with him. What's he going to do? What's David going to do? He's anointed to be king of Israel. He's anointed to be king of Israel. And now the king that he's, that he's a servant to wants him to join him in battle against Israel. So David's lies are starting to catch up with him. He's like, what did I get myself into? Right. We ever been there? Have we ever been there? Now, a lot of times when I ask a question, don't raise your hands. I'm just putting the question out there, okay? <laughs> We should know by now that lies do catch up with us. They will catch up with us. And when they do, it usually puts us in a bad place, just like it did David here. It's put him in a bad place. In verse 2, And David said to Achish, Surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And Achish said to David, Therefore will I make thee keeper of my head forever. Achish is saying, Do what I know you can do, which... He knows he's a mighty warrior, you know. Do what I do what I know you can do, and I'm gonna make you my, my own personal bodyguard. That's what he's saying right here. You're gonna be my bodyguard. Now let's see. The Lord has offered David the kingdom of Israel. But but David has to walk with the Lord. 
If you walked with the Lord, he's offering the kingdom of Israel to be king. But since he's not walking with the Lord, now he has another king. So instead of being a king over a nation, now he's going to be a servant, a bodyguard to a king. Right. Which one would we want? Because he's not walking with the Lord, now he's doing this instead of this. Right. He's down here instead of up here. David has a choice. And it's an easy one. Isn't it? I should go back to Israel because I'm going to be king one day. Right. Or stay here with this king and just be a bodyguard. Same thing today. I like to put the words of God. You know, these, this is not just a history book. The Old Testament is not a history book teaching you history. These teachings, these stories are for us today. We have a choice. Just like David had a choice. Be king or be a servant. We have a choice. Accept God and go to heaven or live the way we want and go to hell. It's the same thing. It seems to be pretty easy to make. But as I said before, a lot of people aren't going to be able to make Or they make it, but they make the wrong one. And it's, it's hard for me to understand. Once the truth was shown to me, I was like, God. You see, go to heaven and live forever with God or go to hell and burn forever with the devil. That's the choice I have to make. Can you see what I'm saying? That's the choice people have to make. And believe it or not, most of them, most of them will make the wrong choice and say, eh, either they're not going to believe it or they're going to say, hmm, I like living my way. They're going to pay tremendously for it. Verse 3, Now Samuel was dead and all Israel had eliminated him and buried him at Ramah even in his own city and Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land he's talking about mediums okay we all know what mediums are people who talk to the dead now this verse seems to come out of nowhere we're talking about David and then the king and fighting and then all of a sudden it says you know Sam, okay Samuel died okay we knew he was gonna die but then it talks about how Saul put away the spirit the mediums and then in verse 4, it goes back to talking about the Philistines again. But we're going to see, verse 3 is going to come back later, and we'll see why he put that there. We'll get it later. Verse 4, And the Philistines gathered themselves together, and came and pinched in Shinnom. And Saul gathered all of Israel together, and they pitched in Gilboa. <coughs> Gilboa. The reason the Philistines were ready to go to war with Israel why they were ready to go to, with, to war with Israel now was because of Samuel. Samuel was a prophet, a man of God. And everybody knew, and all these other nations knew that Israel had a God and he was for real. But they figured, okay, well now, the, now their prophet's dead. Who's going to protect them now? They're, now? they're not going to be able to hear from God because now they don't have a prophet. So they're thinking, now is the time to attack them. They don't have a leader, a spiritual leader. Now, let's drop down to chapter 29. Verses 1 through 11, I'm not going to read them. I'm just going to tell you what they say. It speaks about the Philistines and the Israelites forming their armies ready for battle. It talks about them getting ready. And David and his men were in the rear with the king. They were with the Philistines, but they were in the back with the king. And it shows that the commanders of the Philistines didn't want David there. They were saying, hey, David's a, a, an Israelite. And we're going to go fight the Israelites. We don't want him here. What if he betrays us? What if he turns on us? And the king sticks. He sticks up for David. He says, David's been with me. He's been with me. I found, I found him to be totally trust, trustworthy. That's what it says. And the commander asks that the king would send him back home. So the king tells David, you're going to have to go back home. And, and David says, he says, what have I done? He's been lying to this king. Because remember, he was killing Philistines instead of Israelites. And now they, the commanders are saying, we don't want him with us. Now, they don't know he's been doing that, but they're, they're about right. You know, the commanders are like, well, we're going to fight the Israelites. And 
And you're going to have an Israelite come with us and his men? So the, so the king says, okay, you're going to have to go back. And David says, what have I done? See, David doesn't see he's done anything wrong. He's lied to the king. huh? He's lied to the king. He's not walking with the Lord. And he said, what have I done? David's been away from the Lord so long that he doesn't see he's doing anything wrong. This is his way out from the battle, from fighting his own people. But instead of saying, okay, right away, oh, okay. He says, what have I done? Why are you sending me back? God makes a way for us to escape. When we, like David, when we're in sin and we need to get out of it, I mean, we repent, but also the Lord makes a way for us to get out of our sin. I mean, he makes a way. And 1 Corinthians 10.13 there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. That what Paul is saying here, he's saying there is no temptation we cannot get out of. That's what he's saying here, bottom line. And this is what God is doing. He gave David a way out. By having the commanders say, no, we don't want him with us. That was David's way out. God gave it to him. And he took it, but he only took it because the king made him leave. But he was saying, I, what have I done? He wanted to go. What have I done? I want to go with y'all. But God gave him a way out. Right there. And he didn't accept it. But we need to notice it. We need to see it. God will help us. Even when we're wrong. Even when we're failing him. God will be there for us. He'll be there and say, okay, I'm ready, I'm here. Then we need to decide if we want to accept it or not. Right. You might say, why didn't God use a stronger Christian? Stronger than David, because he's, you know, he's making a lot of mistakes. So we ask, why, isn't he, why didn't he use a stronger Christian? Well, you know, we're all the same. We're all the same. We're all sinners. There's none of us as far as sinners... There's none of us that are more sinful. We're all just plain, flat-out sinners. We can't look down on David. The Lord wanted him to do this, but he went this way. And I'm going to have to throw this in here. The Lord has given us a ministry to do. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation. He's given us the ministry to go to the lost people about him. Again, don't raise no hands. But are we doing a very good job? David's not doing a very good job of walking with the Lord here. He's not doing a good job at all. But are we, are we doing a good job for the Lord? Are we doing what God has told us to do? He's, this is a command. God didn't say if you want to. No, this is a command from God that we need to be telling the lost people about Jesus. Are we like David and this just disobeying them? Think about it. It's the same thing. It's a pretty simple job to do. Ministry. It's pretty simple. But you know why we don't do it? Because we listen to the excuses from the devil. Oh, you don't know what you're saying. Are you too shy? Or, or it puts fear in you. The Lord said, go out there with boldness. Go out there with boldness. Don't go out there like a wimp and talk to him in a small voice like, you know, can I tell you? I hate that. You're a born again Christian. God lives in you. Amen. God lives in you. Don't go out there with boldness. I mean, well, don't be scared to talk to these people. What are they going to do? Turn away from you? Hey, you're there to help them. If they don't want it, well, then go to the next person. But don't be scared to talk to people about Jesus. Don't be scared to tell them, hey, there's a Lord. I need Him. I have Him. You need Him. He will save you from where you're going. And tell them where they're going. A lot of people don't like to do that. But maybe if you tell them where they're going, they might listen. And they might not. But you need to plant the seed. We need to plant the seed. The Bible talks about that. So if we're looking at David and like, man, he's not doing nothing God told him. Think about it, okay? 
You know, praise God that He can use someone like me. Praise God. Because Jesse knows Jesse. None, none of y'all in here know my heart. And like I said before, I barely know my heart. But the Lord does. But He's using me. God is using me. And just like He's using me to stand up here and teach, He can use you just the same to go out there and preach to people. I preach in front of a group, but He's also given us the, the ministry to preach to people one-on-one. -on -one. Now, there's, is there anyone in here right now? And now this is a question, and you can raise your hand. Is there anyone in here right now who feels like they can't do it? Because you go, well, I don't know the Bible that well. You don't need to know the Bible that well. Whatever got you saved can get that person saved. Whatever got you to turn, give your life to the Lord, tell that person, well, I gave my life to the, to the Lord because, and tell them what, what did it. That same thing might get them to know the Lord. So don't feel like you got to know the Word of God and, and know and be knowledgeable and all that. Don't. Whatever got you there can get another person there. I'm really big on the witnessing. Because there's, I mean, do we know where they're going? We know where they're going. Now I'm sure we have family and friends that are not born again Christians. Do we show them how much we love them by telling them? Do we? Do we tell them? Do we show them how much we love them and we want to say, hey, look, I love you and this is the Word of God. But are you just letting it like it's nothing? A lot of people do that. Christians in the family, they don't tell other, their, the other family or their friends, they don't say nothing. Is it not a big deal to you that your family or your friend is dying and going to hell? I would think it is. I know when I gave my life to, to the Lord, the first thing I did was I went to my family. That's the first thing I did. Told all my family, and then I told my friends. That's the first thing. I didn't know none of this about it was our ministry to do. That was my heart. I knew I got something. And I want others to have it. I knew where I was going. And I knew I know where they were going. And the first, that's the first thing I did. I was just a baby Christian, just born again. But I knew I wanted to go tell the people that I love. I'm just glad God can use me. Just like He did with Moses. God wanted to use Moses against to go tell Pharaoh to let his people go. Well, oh, Moses did the same thing we do. He came up with an excuse why he couldn't do it. Exodus 4, verses 10 through 12. This, and Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Sounds like us, huh? Giving an excuse why we can't obey that command from the Lord. We have an excuse, and this is just like Moses. Moses did the same thing. I can't do it because I'm slow of speech. You know, you want me to go tell this Pharaoh to do this and do that. I can't do that. Moses is saying. In verse 11, And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb or the deaf, or the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go. And I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. This is the Lord. Moses came up with all these excuses and, and God said, Hey, I am with you. I'm your mouth. Just like right now in here. Right now. Every time I teach, before I teach, I pray, Lord, take Jesse out of the picture. Let these people hear only your words. And, the, and, and that's what God can do. Just like I'm up here teaching, you can do exactly the same thing one-on-one -on -one with somebody else. Don't think, oh, because Jesse, you know, he has a close walk. No, no. I'm just like y'all. But I take the Word of God. I have faith in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. If He tells me to go out there and do it, I'm going to go out there and do it. If He tells me to go out there with boldness, I'm going to go out there with, with boldness. I'm going to let Him take over my lips. And He will if you let Him. Because some of us say, well, I don't know what to say. That's fine. The Spirit knows what to say. You got the Spirit in you? The Spirit knows what to say. You might not know what to say up here, 
but the Spirit knows what to say. Amen? Amen. So quit making excuses, please. There's people who are lost and going to hell out there. And we have the message of God. There's a lot of other messengers out there with a false gospel. And people are going to them because they don't know anything else. The servants of the devil are greater servants than we are. We're servants of God. They're servants of the devil. And they're out there door to door. I mean, that's what they do. They're very active. And the people of the true God, I mean, all you got to do is look around. What church do you go to? Are people getting baptized all the time? Or is it like once a month, maybe once every two months, people are getting baptized, getting saved? Is, is, is that good? I mean, that's all we can get saved? If the church has 300 people in it and you, you might get uh, one person to come to the Lord out of 300 people, witnessing, supposed to be, I'm just showing you how bad we are. And I'm just, just the truth. We're bad. We're, we're, we, do not, we do not care about the lost people. Because if we did, we'd be out there. We'd be telling people. I know the Lord gave me that heart. And I, I got born again when I was 25. And I, from 25 up to now, I still preach to whoever comes by me. I, I'm going to find a way to talk about the Lord. No matter where I'm at. Or who it's to. It doesn't matter. Because I have God in me. And that's the way I look at it. And that's why I can do what I do. Because of the Holy Spirit giving me the boldness to do it. Because before, Jesse was so quiet, I had to get drunk if I wanted to look alive. You hear me? If I didn't drink before, I'd, you would think I was dead. I was so quiet. But now I don't need alcohol. Amen. I've got the power of the Holy Spirit in me. Amen. To talk in front of people. Oh, you would never... I would never believe I was going to talk in front of people. I almost didn't talk to one-on-one. -on -one. I didn't want to talk. But look what the Lord has done to me. And He can do it to you. If He's done it to me, He can do it to you. If you let Him. Okay? Amen? Amen. Look how far David has fallen. We're going to see. Even though David has fallen, he's not there yet. Believe it or not, he's going to fall even further. We're not there yet. But David has fallen so much, you're wondering... How can God use them? We're going to see that God can still use them. Again, like I said, David says, what, what have you found in me that you can't trust me? That's what he told that king. You know, what have I done? When he, when he knows himself for everything he's done, he's been lying to a king. But you get into sin, and then after a little while, you don't look at it as sin. Now this upsets my stomach. I'm reading it. You know, I love reading the Word of God, but some of the stuff I read, I'm like, ugh. He calls His enemy my Lord. My Lord. He calls the enemy my Lord with a small L. I noticed that twice God's name is mentioned and the king is the one who mentions it. If you go back and read it, you'll see that the king is the one that uses God's name. Not for himself, but for David. Talking about his king. Get away from the Lord. Walk away from the Lord. And after a little while, you don't even recognize him. You don't even go to him. You, don't, you, you have no Christian life. None. And that's what a little bit of sin can do. Remember, it started him taking on two wives. That's what it started. Because he was walking with the Lord. Then he took on two wives. That little bit of sin... And it just grew. It's gotten so big that he doesn't recognize God. He recognizes a king, a lost man, as his Lord. Verse 9. And Atkish answered and said to David, I know that thou art good in my sight as an angel of God. Notwithstanding the princes of the Philistines have said, He shall not go up with us to battle. This king is promoting David up to angels. This king, this lost man, is looking at David as being almost as good as God. He didn't say he's like a God, but he says he's like an angel. Lost people don't know what good is in God's eyes. You know, you have your sweet little lost grandmother, sweet little lady. If she's not a born-again Christian... 
She's wicked. But in our eyes, the lost people's eyes, oh, she's so sweet. You know, she's so good. In God's eyes, do you, do you all hear me what I'm saying? In God's eyes, if you're not born again, you're wicked, period. That's the Word of God. I'm only preaching you the Word of God, okay? This is the Word of God. I know we want to look at everybody, oh, they're going to heaven because they're so good, they're so nice. Goodness, being nice, does not get you to heaven. Putting Jesus Christ in your heart, getting born again and living for Him is what gets you to heaven. Not being a sweet little old lady. Not being a nice person. Because there's a lot of people that are lost and going to hell who are nice. I hope y'all hearing me. Mm -hmm. Well, David went back home and the Philistines marched to uh, Jezebel. No, Jezreel. Jez Jezreel, something Jezreel. like that. Yeah. Now we're going to drop down to chapter 30. And it came to pass, verse 1, And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and the Ziklags had smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. Now, the Lemonites knew that David and his men, his warriors, had went to battle with the Philistines. They didn't know he was coming back, but they knew that David and his warriors were gone. So they came and, and, uh, and, and uh, <clears throat> invaded this city. And they took all the women and the kids with them. Now, usually, when a nation would go into another nation, to another city, they would kill everything. Everybody, everything. But right here, it says it took, all, it took the women and the kids with them. Now there's times in the Bible when a person or persons that are not walking with the Lord because of their sin, it can affect the family also. Okay, that's another teaching. I'm not going to get into that. But right here, it could have. I mean, they could have killed everyone. The women and the children. Because like I said, that's what they did. But God was protecting them. God was protecting them. It's got to be a reason for that. Why God protected them. Verse 3. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept and, until they had no more power to weep. Does this sound like mighty warriors? They come back to the city and they see everybody's gone. And they're all afraid. All these mighty warriors are afraid. Seems like it would. It seems like they would have said, "Let's go. Let's go get them." I mean, as soon as they got there and they saw what happened, let's go get them. Let's see if they're not dead yet. But they wept, till they had no more to weep. Verse five. And David's two wives were taken captives. It was already said that all were taken. The verse above said all were taken. So, but, but God is pointing out David's two wives were taken. Now when he says all, that's everybody. But there's a reason the Lord's pointing out that David's two wives were taken also. Remember back in the teaching how I pointed out that David's downfall started with the having two wives? Remember that. Verse 6. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved every man for his son and for his daughters but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God this is the way the people reacted to David they wanted to stone him because of what happened now here David has he's, he's had these men and their families with him for a while now remember it's been like Probably not even last week, the week before. These men and these families have been following David. There, that was, that's their leader. And because of this, now they want to stone him. Hmm. Who's that sound like? What happened to Jesus? Thousands. Thousands were following him. What happened to all those people that were following him when they came and arrested him? They turned their back on him. Just like here. 
They was their leader. Now they want to stone him because of what happened. This is the people, this is the way people react when they're not walking with the Lord. We get in the flesh and we want to hurt somebody. The last part of this verse, they realizes he needs to repent and get back with the Lord. The last part of that verse says it. He hasn't gone to the Lord for a long time. He's what some call backslider. And for those of you who don't know what backslider means, a backslider who is a born again believer, but he decides, or he or she, they decide to be independent from God instead of dependent on Him. You hear me? They decide they want to do their thing instead of God's thing. A backslider will come back. A backslider. But if you stay out there on your own thing and you stay out there, then you wasn't really ever born again Christian, just like Judas. Judas walked with the Lord, ate with the Lord, was with the Lord the whole time, with Jesus. And what did he do? Betrayed, Betrayed him. You would, everybody would have thought, hey, he's a disciple, he's a man of God. But look what happened to him. So you can't go by looking at people and how they walk. A backslider, yeah, when they backslid, they're away from the Lord. But they will come back. Did Judas come back? Mm -hmm. He didn't repent. But he walked and talked like a Christian. Like I've said a hundred times, there are a lot of wolves out there. Preachers, teachers, watch them. Make sure they're teaching you the Word of God. Make sure you follow them in, in the Word. Check them out. Please check them out. When we're not walking with the Lord and life keeps getting harder and harder, that's what happens. When you're not walking with the Lord, life gets harder and harder. We start to think and remember of all the times the Lord watched over us. And we're thinking, why, why did I leave that? There's a lot of people who do that. Why did I leave that? 